Harmony of Dissonance is a direct reaction to Circle of the Moon, which is seen in how they both begin. Oh, I found some boots. <laughs> the card system is rejected, streamlined in favour of spell books. Loot drops are far more frequent. Juiced is from a different school of vampire hunter to Nathan, with his effeminate look suiting the likes of Alucard. Even the plot shares parallels with Circle of the Moon. Harmony of Dissonance's story is a reflection, a mirror form of Circle of the Moon turned upside down. They both share the same structure inherited from Symphony of the Night. Dracula's castle returns too early, causing the protagonist to investigate. Dracula is resurrected following the events prior in a different game. With Symphony of the Night, that is Rondo of Blood. Circle of the Moon, it is implied to be Bloodlines, and Harmony of Dissonance is Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. In each game, you play the role of a previous hero's descendant or disciple. There is a character possessed or influenced by Dracula or his minions to serve him, each becoming rival to the protagonist. Richter is familiar with Alucard, as he is aware of his friendship with Trevor in Castlevania III. He is forced to battle Alucard due to his feelings towards being irrelevant after defeating Dracula, which Shaft uses to control him. In contrast, Hume resents Nathan as he feels entitled to continue the legacy of the Morris bloodline being his son, and feels Nathan is not as skilled as himself. Camilla uses these feelings to manipulate Hugh against Nathan. Maxim's story comes across as one of a troubled comrade, powerless to change his closest friend's destiny, and through this sympathy, creates a weakness that is easily exploited. Maxim of all the rivals is the one the most focused and the largest role in the story playing the role of primary antagonist. The rivals' approaches differ to one another. Maxim's intentions come across as pure and sincere towards Deuce. Hugh, alternatively, follows a traditional intent of believing he is stronger than Nathan and therefore deserves to be in a better position. Both rivals start in the same position, but as the story progresses, Maxim becomes a more fleshed out character than Hugh. Which makes sense considering the man behind the curtain, Koji Igarashi whose desire is to further expand the storytelling aspect of the Castlevania franchise. As both the scenario writer and the producer of these titles, he makes clear in interviews that he was not impressed by Circle of the Moon. The structure and themes of Harmony of Dissonance's narrative represent that. Igarashi returns to his classic style. Igarvania is back in full force. The game's neon-coloured visuals are in direct response to criticisms that Circle of the Moon's darker palette was difficult to see on GBA screens. Under this garish neon glow, the overall design is still Symphony of the Night, creating a strange visual clash, becoming a unique gothic acid trip. To others, this visual noise begins to melt their eye sockets. While I don't think it's fair to say Harmony is ugly, in a lot of ways it surpasses Circle of the Moon's visuals. However, it won't be appealing to anyone looking for classic gothic horror, the bright, glaring colours are reminiscent of the series 8-bit days. While there is a case to be made that was the intent considering the game's numerous references to Simon's Quest, the evidence points towards the technical limitations of the hardware. Harmony of Dissonance gets away with a lot of its visuals, thanks to its insistence on impressive set pieces that are burnt into your mind long after playing. If this game is Koji Igarashi's attempt at a portable symphony of the night, he wasn't far off the mark. Like Symphony of the Night, the game is loaded with bosses. Many corridors exist to squeeze in another big sprite that wants to turn Juice into a fine paste. Bosses, thankfully, are far less of a struggle to fight in comparison to Circle of the Moon's bullet hell handheld flinging experience. A major contributor being that Igarashi and his team have the common decency to restore the player's health after defeating a boss. Classic Vania orb style at that. The bosses range from being impressive to tiresome, as many motifs are repeated over. Because Symphony of the Night was loaded with boss fights, Harmony of Dissonance feels obliged to do the same. Sadly, this means that the game is full of more bosses than are needed. They begin to exhaust the game. You all roll your eyes as another large dual-handed weapon wielder who shuffles back and forth with the same overhead swings and dashes as the previous three has reared his dull head into view. There are a few exceptions. Bat is a fun remix of the first boss of the series, Shadow is a visually spectacular shapeshifter, and while having two Legion fights is overkill, as a throwback to an iconic Symphony of the Night boss, it's hard not to be entertained. 
As much as I may have criticised Circle the Moon's map layout and bosses, at least there are only 9 of them, and when you defeat a boss it signals the end of that segment of the game. Harmony of Dissonance's woes in this regard feel like completely different problems to Circle of the Moon, as its bosses are sprinkled throughout. It's all too easy to miss a boss and confront them much later, at which point they're as effective as a paper mache dog. A big improvement over Circle of the Moon's combat is how much less RNG dependent the game is. Rather than the answer to boss fights being grind, or be lucky enough to have the correct card combination, the symphony style freedom has returned. Juiced has access to various sub weapons that are boosted with different equipment. He can equip spellbooks to alter the effects of a sub weapon using up MP instead of heart, as well as having full control over his whip being able to alter its effects with different stones. The biggest improvement Harmony makes for the series up to this point is the movement. One small change that shifts the game feel in a huge way. Juiced has a dash similar to Alucard's. Unlike our favourite Darmpir though, his dash does not have a delay and can be used in both directions. This makes the flow of the game lightning fast in comparison to Circle. That one simple change makes exploring fun. The motion is responsive and works in tandem with other actions, meaning Juiced can burst through a room lunging forwards, slicing through creatures in one smooth action. The combat becomes a fast paced touch and go affair as you dance around enemy patterns. The overall difficulty is more forgiving than prior games. The quick save feature alleviates frustration and progression as there is no looming fear of running out of battery life and losing hours of progress. It can also be used if a player feels they are close to death and haven't saved for a while, meaning your playstyle can be reckless and aggressive if you know you can maintain precious experience or story progression at any given time. On the whole, the challenge of Harmony is easier to handle thanks to Juice's utility and the game's numerous quality of life changes. While there is a merchant in Harmony of Dissonance, the way he works in the game is bizarre, working against the player. In theory, the merchant appearing in locations with exclusive items only when you meet certain requirements is a quirky twist on the formula, however in practice many requirements are far too cryptic, meaning that he'll vanish on a complete whim, making him hard to rely on, although this is still better than the absence of a merchant seen in Circle. The map design at the beginning works in a solid fashion as the map is segmented into chunks that lead to other teleporters taking you to various locations of the castle in the same way as elevators in Metroid. However, in the early midway point it is revealed you have been jumping in between two alternate castles and the map fully opens up allowing Juice to explore Castle A and Castle B. This is when it becomes confusing to figure out where exactly you need to go and which castle you need to be in in order to progress. While for a player aiming to explore every single element of the castle, this may not be as much of a problem. However, for those wanting to reach the end of the game, the utter confusion that presents itself will just frustrate. While the game has a few visual cues to demonstrate the differing castles, they're just not big enough to make it apparent which world is which as opposed to the reverse castle in Symphony of the Night. If you were to compare the two castled structure to other games that feature parallel worlds, usually with a light and dark motif, it's strange that Harmony of Dissonance, despite having this be the theme of the castles, failed to create that same clear visual style which would have complemented its acid gothic aesthetic. Having the player discover they have been switching between castles as opposed to teleporting is an impactful one, however the game would have benefited from allowing players to switch in a more frequent manner, as the only method is for a limited amount of teleporters making switching a hassle. This could have been alleviated with the use of an item or having the various save rooms serve as dimensional doors along with the teleporters. A big missed opportunity with the design of the two castles is for unique puzzle solving or platforming that calls for shifting between the two castles. This would have helped the game maintain a solid flow throughout and cemented a further unique player experience than the one presented. For example, there could be a boss that requires the player to shift between Castle A and Castle B to be able to target critical points or avoid devastating attacks. The room could break apart in different positions, causing the player to become conscious of the environment, creating a unique skill check scenario. Perhaps when you first discover that the castle is split in two, it creates an unstable rift in the level design, creating a unique explorative puzzle for the player to navigate through as they switch between castle A and B on the fly to progress. The surface of this concept is barely scratched and underwhelms its true potential. 
Regardless of the visuals and harmony of dissonance being a split opinion, there is no denying how weak the soundtrack is. Igarashi and Kojima may be back, but it's clear that Yamane certainly is not. Loud droning screeches assault the senses, with but a few exceptions reaching the level of passable or inoffensive. While I managed to persevere through the soundtrack to the very end, I wouldn't recommend others do the same. I'd suggest finding your favourite musician and playing the game on mute instead. There are four endings. Unlike Symphony of the Night, map completion is not part of the requirements. Instead, depending on which castle you confront the final boss, if you find all of Dracula's remains, and if you are equipped with specific items during the battle. These requirements are of the time, as their crypticness means unless you look it up, you just have to know. The best ending, in which the only change is that Liddy will cuddle up to Juice if you find and place all collectibles in the furniture room, is a cute touch on a personal note. I guess she's a big fan of Juice's passion for interior decorating. The post-game is where Harmony of Dissonance truly shines, with a myriad of options available to the player. Players get access to Maxim, who has his own unique set of moves and playstyle, as well as being able to play the game without the ability to use magic. Players can also gain access to a harder level of difficulty. For people wanting that challenge out of the gate, this mode should have been an option without having to beat the entire game. Beating the game grants a true challenge and sound test mode. The boss rush mode has three separate tiers of difficulty. Both Juiced and Maxim are playable characters. It's a welcome addition to the series. If a player enters the infamous Konami code before the title screen, you are also treated to a playable Simon Belmont in boss rush mode, in all his 8-bit glory, complete with music that calls back to the classic soundtracks of the past. In reflection, Harmony of Dissonance is in a difficult position. For everything the game does right, another element fails. It's hard to view the game on its own merits without comparing it to others that came before. Every decision was made in response to the prior games. Even if it course corrects more than necessary, creating a difficult foundation for its legacy. It made small steps in the right direction for Egovania's most formative years, although it's not uncommon to see Harmony of Dissonance considered the weakest of the franchise due to being the awkward middle child of the GBA trilogy, the first of which gained a lot of exposure due to being the most critically acclaimed GBA title at launch, and the game following Harmony garnering a huge amount of critical praise and success, enough so to get a direct sequel. Harmony, in this regard, does not have much to show in comparison to its two brothers. If Harmony of Dissonance's legacy remains as the weakest of the Egovania-styled Castlevanias, that is a testament to how excellent the franchise is. It's okay, Juiced. I enjoyed your adventure. Even if it was a mess, your heart was in the right place. We explore the final chapter of the GBA trilogy next time. The Swan Song. Aria of Sorrow.